Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look at Halls of Hegra. We're going to do a preview of that for the Kickstarter, which is launching this week. This is a game designed by Peter Shanka Olson and published by Tompet Games. This is a solitaire only game and it's going to be, as you can see, pretty involved by looking at the board. Right now it just looks like a mess. Now, this is the end of the latest game that I've played. I've just left the board in the state it was. I kind of put a couple of things back on the board so I can talk about them in this preview, but I wanted to go over the gameplay while it was fresh in my mind. So the basis of the game is you are running a fortress up in the mountains in Norway early World War II. You have a group of volunteers that you're going to be commanding and you're going to be taking on a numerically superior force of Germans not only numerically superior, but they're also going to have artillery, they're going to have aircraft, things like that, along with infantry. You're going to have infantry, you're going to have some guns, but it's going to be pretty much a tough slog for you to get through this game and survive. Let alone, I mean, surviving is the hard part. Winning is going to be the, the most difficult part, and that's where I think the fun and the challenge really does lie with this game, because you keep coming back to it. Even though you lose, you're going to be challenged enough and feel that you were never out of the game uh, except for a couple times you'll get out of the game pretty early and things like that do happen. But the balance is there to where you're going to feel like you're in the game at all times enough to where you're going to want to come back each time. And I think that's pretty fantastic. For example, this game that I just finished here, I had probably the best die rolls and the best pulling that I had for my defenders. You have to pull them from a bag. We'll talk about that. Uh, the The worker placement that you use you have your defenders here these discs that's your guys you pull them from a bag and there's another disc in there called the doubt disc and when you draw that you end up having to grab only one of your guys put the rest over here in the reserve and they're out of the game until they're brought back in through a card play or some other means and i had only a couple of doubt pulls so i it really didn't affect me in one instance, I had the doubt as the first, so that didn't affect me at all, and that was fantastic. I had the best die rolls that I've ever had, I think, in a game. Just consistently, I was mowing down these infantry as they were coming in. Now, in the latter stages of the game, you can see they really are built up as they're coming up the board here for their final assault. But that was the way it ended up in the final stand, and I ended up losing by going to unconditional surrender. Now, even with all that luck, and all those dice rolls, great amount of defenders to get out there to do different things and to really get my fortress in good shape. I still made some mistakes, and those mistakes cost me. And, of course, the game itself is very punishing to the point where, at the end, it was it just finished me off. But it wouldn't have finished me off if I had done things differently a couple of a couple of things differently and handled things a little bit better so it wasn't like the game was just punishing me for the sake of punishing me it was punishing me based on bad mistakes reason i say that is because one of the games that this is compared to in the marketing spiel is they say this is a game in the same vein as robinson crusoe and this war of mine and dead of winter now, I think this game, it definitely has some Robinson Crusoe style elements to it. But I think it leans a little bit more towards this war of mine and Dead of Winter. Because the reason why I say that is, I know when you hear Robinson Crusoe, some people are going to just automatically say, ah, I'm out. While it's a really lauded game and a lot of people do enjoy it, a lot of people also have difficulty with the high rules overhead as well as the punishing play. You know, it will punish you similar to what you get here but this is not going to punish you as hard as robinson crusoe does and the rules overhead is much much lower than what you have in robinson crusoe so while it does have a comparison i don't want anybody to hesitate or hold back thinking well i tried robinson crusoe i found it too much i didn't want to do it this is not going to be that type of game so just keep that in mind now as i said this is going to be crowdfunded on kickstarter and that is going to launch this week this is a prototype, so bear in mind when you're looking at the components, you're not seeing the final components. However, it looks to me like this is going to be the final art and the final board layout. There may be some tweaks or changes as development continues on the game before it's published, but I think this is pretty much set the way it's going to be, which is fantastic. Now, there are, like I said, some changes. These discs that are used for your defenders, they're going to be 
just like this, but I think they're going to be screen printed or stickered, something like that to actually give you symbols on them rather than just blank discs. So there's going to be upgrades to the components all across the game. The art on the cards, I'll show you a close up here on the cards. I really like the art here because it conveys the sense of danger, desperation, futility, and the bravery of the overall situation, which is modeled in the game. This lonely mountain fortress that you're digging out of the snow and you're trying to get your defenses up to take on the superior German forces. And the way this game is also modeled, it feels that way throughout the game. I think that was a great job by Peter. He's really got the balance down to where you feel like, yep, you're getting pounded, but you're really not going to feel out of it at any one point. Like I did say earlier, there will be times where you're out of it pretty early, but that will be due to a combination of maybe some poor decisions or just really bad luck. But you've got enough cards there where you'll see different things each time for at least several plays. And of course, they'll come out in different combinations. But like any game with cards, you're going to start to be familiar with the cards as they come out. And you'll be like, oh, this is a bad card to get, or this isn't too bad, things like that. But overall, uh, I really commend him on the art, the layout of the game, and the rule book itself. There's only a couple little niggles I have, uh, one primarily on the board, which we'll talk about later. Now, looking at the board here, it's going to look a little confusing at first, and right now it's very busy because, like I said, I just finished a game. When you first start off, you're not going to have all this stuff out here. You're going to have very little. It's going to grow out as the game goes on. But what we have here is we've got this area here where you've got your defenders, you're going to have your tired area, and then you have your rest area, then you have your ready area. As you use your defenders here to do different things, you're going to move them to the tired area. At the end of the turn, you can move two to the rest area, which is a free action. You'll get them back the next turn. But every time you need to move anybody into the ready from your tired area, you've got to spend supply cubes. And each cube is going to have a different value. At the beginning, you start off at four. But as the game goes on, when we finished out in the final turn, the last stand, it was down to one. I just pushed it up to four to show you what it's going to be like at the beginning. So for every cube, I can put four of the defender discs in the ready, which means I can then take them out here and do different actions with them. You'll do your actions here primarily, and you also can shovel snow. And this is not the board you're going to have here. At first, you're going to have another overlay. And this is the overlay that will be on the board. This is where you're going to track your fear and doubt. You're also going to be opening up supply routes and negotiating to move your fear or doubt markers up and down. When it comes to the fear and doubt, this is going to reflect the attitude of the Norwegian people and your troops in supporting this defense against the German military. Doubt, which is on the right hand side here, that's going to be reflected by these orange discs, which are going to be in your draw bag for your defenders. And what you're going to be doing here is every turn you're going to pull up to four defenders out of the bag and put them into the ready area. You'll have this orange disc here this is the doubt. If you pull this, then say we just drew two discs right here, and then I pull a doubt disc. How this is going to work is I can choose one to keep, put it in the ready area, then one will go off into the reserve. So it's out for now until it gets brought back in through another means. So that's why these doubt discs can really mess with you. It's a push your luck mechanism here as you're drawing from the bag. You can just choose to draw one and play it safe. And if you don't get the doubt on the first pull, then you can just keep whatever you pulled. If you didn't and you go all the way through till say three and you're just about to do your last pull, you pull out when you on your last pull, you pull out the doubt disc. Well, you can only pull one or keep one and the other two are going to go in the reserve. So that's the challenge of getting through this. And to make it worse is each turn in the mobilization phase, another doubt disc is thrown in there. So you start with one in the bag, and then each time you play an event, you'll be throwing another one in the bag. So before you have your first poll, you'll be getting two. Now, the interesting thing is, like I said before, I just finished this game and I had great polls. I didn't run into this problem too many times, which was the first time that's happened, and that's a rarity because your luck is against you. You're definitely going to be dealing with these. Now, why you want to get your fear down is if you see here, it goes up to a maximum of six, goes down to a minimum of zero. If you can do the negotiate action, which is right here, which is going to need an officer and another volunteer or soldier or whatever, you're going to have to have two 
discs here, you can drop your fear down. And you only have three cards in the mobilization phase. So if you can do that three times, you go from three down to two, down to one, down to zero. That means at the end of this phase, when this flips over for the first attack, you will not have to pull two discs out of here and put them into the reserve. That's huge because then you're not throwing down your bag. You're not taking out two of those discs. You're not going to miss out on those because then without those two in the bag, you're going to have a greater chance of running into your doubt discs. Now, there are ways to get these out too, which you're going to want to try to do. You want to mitigate as much as you can having to pull those out. There are two other bags. You have your patrol bag and then you have your hit bag. The patrol bag here is going to put out the German soldiers on the board here. This is going to be like your tactical area. And it starts off with the mobilization phase and they're all color coded. Mobilization, then you have your first attack, siege one, and then siege two, and then the last stand is not going to have a spot here. But that map is really critical for your supply runs. You can, on here on the back of this map, or on the back of this board here, it says open a new supply route. You got to put two defenders down there, and then you put a guy out here. Open a uh, supply route, you're going to put these different supply tokens. We've got morale, miss, supply, and then removing German patrols. These little discs here, you're going to put these up into the different areas that match what it is. Like, for example, taking out the German patrols, that would be on that second column there. The first one is the supplies, and then the fourth one is the morale. The third one is the miss. You put out one of them, whichever one you choose, and then you get your guy uh, over here for running off to your supply run, get him out the fortress, and then they run up the column to get to that supply. They're basically going to, as long as there's no German patrols in their way or guns, they're going to get out there in one turn, and then they're going to turn around and, depending on the weather, can get could get back in one turn. Now, the weather track over here, which is dictated by the event card. If it's snowing, you're going to have a slower movement, one to four. If you have cloudy, it's going to be one to five. And then sunny is one to six. I ran into several cards in a row that were sunny and that was one to six movement, which was fantastic because when you're coming back with the supplies, you're burdened by carrying them. So you drop one, unless you have one of the specialty classes, which is the hunter. The hunter is a woodsman. He's able to get out there knows his way around and strong buff guy he can carry that stuff back he does not have any problems carrying that back so he does not suffer the negative one on movement that all the others will and that's great you can get him back faster the soldier if you put the soldier out there he's going to still suffer the negative one however if he runs into a german patrol as he's trying to come back he can try sneaking past or just the better thing to do is just take him out and it's simply just removing them because he's a soldier, he's able to do that. However, you're gonna raise your suspicion. That's one of the things you're trying to do. You're trying to balance as you move out here, not raising your suspicion any higher. You go up to the max, which is six, then you're gonna put out another German token, another German patrol, then you drop back down to three. Sometimes it'll be worth the risk, other times it won't be, but that's all depending on what, you, what you're doing and what's going on, how many supplies are left. You wanna get that engine going you want to get those guys out there running these supplies back and forth and this is where it gets to be a little tactical it's kind of like a light tactical as these germans are placed out here it's going to be early on so it's most likely you're going to, appear, going to be up here or i'm just going to throw this one over here you see you've got these dotted lines between these spots they are also interconnected so maybe you start over here and there's a this german here you're not able to get past him up to one so you move across and say there's no German over here. You move across, you move up, and then you move back across and then up. It's going to take you longer, but you can bypass the German there. Again, if you have a soldier, you can just run up there and take him out. Or you can try sneaking past them, which is something you can do also. However, you run the risk of raising suspicion. The best part about the supplies are not only are you getting individual supplies like supplies themselves or taking out the Germans, the mist token or the morale is you also get supplies, extra supplies when you come back. You'll raise your morale just like you'd expect. You brought some extra supplies to your troops and now the morale raises and then you will have the specialty token.
for example, you can remove one German patrol. You can save this for when you need it. You got a guy, he's running up there to pick up the supplies. A German gets dropped down in front of him. Well, guess what? You can remove that German, but when you do, that token is out of the game. That specialty is out of the game. So use it, but use it wisely. Uh, use it when you need to. And these are really critical. The mist tokens here, when you pull these in, you can take one of these mist tokens and put them into the hit bag. And this is the bag building aspect. When you put any of those mist tokens in this bag, these are used later in the game. When you, once you get into the sieges, you're going to be drawing these out and you're going to have things like aircraft attacks. Injure one defender. And that's how these guys end up in the infirmary. Or this one, another injure one defender. And that happened quite a bit. As you can see, my guy's over here in the waiting room. And then I got a guy in a bed. I got a couple that are healing. And then you have your missed token. And then we have another one, which is negative one morale. If you have a miss, say you had to draw four of these, you have a miss token, you're good to go. This is just a miss, but it goes into the reserve. It gets taken out of the bag. It doesn't go back in the bag. These will continually be used and will continue to do damage to you, which is one of the problems of the game. That's part of the challenge of the game. You're going to be facing constant air assault. You're going to also be facing artillery. You want to try to take out those artillery guns that are out there for the Germans because the more guns that are out there means the more of these hit tokens that you'll be drawing. So like you see, there's uh, several areas of balancing that you have to work through. But I do like the bag building aspect. And uh, I think it's pretty neat how that's been added in and you have that little light tactical aspect as well as you're moving your guys up and down on the supply because it's very critical to get those supplies fast early. Get them, if you can get enough defenders out there, you want to be repairing, you want to be building things up and getting through the snow, which we'll talk about here in a second, and get those supplies. Now, when you go through the snow, everything is snowed under right now. That's the point of the fortress. You start off on three, and then depending on what the event card tells you, it'll be snowy, it'll be overcast, or it'll be sunny, you have shovel snow. Every defender you put out there moves the marker down one. You move it down two, then you move it down three. Once you get here, you get to draw one of these cards, and this will give you some sort of benefit. Like, for example, here you get steel plates. This gives you plus two miss. So you get two of these miss tokens, and you would put these two in the hit bag. So that's one way to add to the hit bag because you dug through the snow. Other things will give you like which I already have out here because uh, I just finished this game. You get things like the map room, the radio, the medicine cabinet, field telephone, counter patrol, things like that that give you other actions that you can do. So that's why it's imperative to dig out everything you can as fast as you can. Where you can speed that up a little bit, you need to do this three times. So you can throw out three volunteers, for example, which are the blue discs here, or you can throw out your hunter. And where the hunter is beneficial here is he gets two actions here. So if it starts off on three, you have your hunter there, it immediately moves down to one. And of course you can add, if you want to, you can add a volunteer and then you've got all three. Now you get the card. You can crank through this fast and that's one of the things you want to do. But when you do that, remember, especially early on, you don't have a lot of defenders you're taking away from another action over here. So you've got to balance out all your actions, which is, again, the challenge in the game, is seeing what you can get through as fast as possible. So I've got one of each card that's at the top there. I've got a mobilization card, a first attack, a siege one, siege two, and the last stand. Now, just flipped over this mobilization card. As you can see here, it's gonna give you sunny. That means you are at sunny, not overcast or, or snowy. You must move the fear marker two levels up and the doubt marker one level up. You start off, like I've shown you before, with this mobilization phase. You start off at one and then three. It says here to move up the fear marker two levels and doubt up one. So doubt would go up again one more space, but it'd still be at one. That's the discs that you put in the bag. From three, it goes to five, and it goes to a max of six. So this is going to be difficult getting us back down to zero if you get this card early. And on the bottom of the card, it tells you to add a doubt disc and then do your draw. On the right-hand side, you also have these icons. And when it comes to injuring any of your 
the fenders, you'll use this as the guide as to which one will be injured because it will change with each card. So for this one, the hunter would be first, then a soldier, then a volunteer, then a medic, then the officer. And then we get into the first attack phase. This is when things are starting to get a little interesting. They get real interesting in Siege 1 and 2, and of course in the last game, but the first attack is kind of like a probe by the Germans, and it feels that way. You're still going to get hurt. Good example here, it goes to Cloudy, and it says, Injure two defenders, move the artillery marker one step to the right. So now you, it starts off over here, and you have all your artillery pieces. You're going to go from 2 to 2. Not too bad yet, but it's going to start moving down once you get artillery markers out. That means more draws from the hit bag, which is definitely going to be painful for you. And then we have here you draw your defender tokens or your defender discs. And then at the bottom, it shows you this little meeple icon in three. It's just kind of like a little simple meeple. It's actually these are the meeples. This is what the meeple is going to look like in the final game. So it's going to be different than what you see here on the card. But this is just for the prototype. That means to put three of these German meeples out. And where you're going to put that out is you're going to flip over that mobilization face to the first attack, and you have this simple little ladder here. Then you're going to roll, and you're going to decide if, based on a die roll, whether they hit or move. If they move, then they move up to sector two. If they hit, then the, depending on what you have on your defense level is how many hits you'll take, which could injure, injure your guys that are defending the walls. Anybody else is going to stay here in sector one. But it's just this simple little ladder and then you can see here how that changes and expands out when you get to Siege 1 and Siege 2. You're going to be seeing more German infantry. It's going to just expand and grow, and it's going to be that much more painful as you go along. And this is going to be your defense track. You start off on zero. You're going to have to build that up by using the bolster action, and you can get it up to a maximum of three. And then, of course, it can also get taken down every attack as well. Then at the bottom, if you go down below zero, it says draw one tile from the hit bag. So you're going to draw in an extra hit from the hit bag, and that is not going to be good for you. So again, why you want to be balancing out different things, not forgetting about your defense while you're repairing guns, while you're repairing these positions, because these, these defensive positions all start off needing repair because it's a fortress that's been in disrepair. So you get your guys out there, you take these repair things off, you got them all repaired, then you man the guns, you man the wall, and these guys will attack at the end of the turn. And then later on in the game, you'll also get the machine gun. There is no counter uh, in the prototype that I got, so I just kind of threw a counter that I made down real quick. And you will roll a die there. The best part about this is when these guys fire, it's one meeple that gets affected, one German soldier. When you fire with the machine gun, you affect three. So you're either going to suppress them or you're going to take them out. It's really simple. You get a 50-50 shot. You're either putting their heads down or you're putting them in the dirt. So either way, they're going down. And that's a great thing. But then you will jam afterwards. You can also spend supply if, you, if you're down to three and you really need to get these three out of here because they're just about ready to hit the charge box where they're going to come in and actually attack you physically. Then you can spend a... Supply token, that will give you a plus two on the dies. That way, if, if you roll a two, you get the plus two that puts it at a four, which is going to be a hit, and you'll be able to take out those three German soldiers. So that's the risk that you're going to have to take uh, in a situation like that. Then you also have artillery guns, which are over here, and these will fire. You'll basically just reveal the tile that's underneath them, and this is a hit, so you would select the location you're hitting, whether you're going to hit one of the artillery pieces out of here, you're going to hit one of the German patrols, or you're going to fire on the infantry that's attacking. And you can hit two over here. Then you have to roll and see if you jam. The same thing that you have to do when you attack from the wall. you got to make sure you don't jam. And you're going to jam quite often, and that's where the repair action comes in. So just because you repaired all these walls and stuff, don't think those guys are not going to be repairing again. They're going to be repairing often because you're going to have weapons fail, and you're going to take damage based on hits. You're going to need to repair those things. Now, I just want to go back over something real quick. Uh, I did mention these guys are volunteers. These blue guys, the black disc, he's a, an officer. These are the volunteers. The white guys are the medics. And then you have the green, that is going to be the hunters. And then you have the red, which are the soldiers. Now, just a quick rundown. You've got the soldiers. They're going to be great at fighting, obviously. Like I said, if they go up the supply route, they can take out Germans on the way. 
to or from, and that way it's a little easier. You're going to raise suspicion, of course. Hunters, they can run up and back without any issue carrying their load. They're not going to have a negative one on the movement. And they can also shovel your snow at two times, so that way you can move from three down to one really quick with just one hunter there. If you put two, you get even more, obviously. Then you have your medics. These are going to be used primarily for healing. They could be used for other things too, but primarily you're going to have them in the infirmary. And just like the hunters, they do two actions. So if this guy is over here, you got one guy and he's, this injured guy is on one, this guy would move up two spots to three. If I had two, then he would go two more spots to five, six. And then after that, he will heal one more time, then he's back in action. But right now he was down to the one. That was as far as I got with him. And then uh, you have the volunteers, which are pretty much jacks of most trades, masters of none. <laughs> they don't get anything special, really, uh, but they will fill in the blanks and fill in the, all the spaces on where you'll need uh, to get your guys going. And then over here, you have the morale track. Like I said, we have three cards that are pulled out in every phase, except for Siege 1. On the track, you'll see here, mobilization is 1 through 3, first attack is 4 through 6, then you have a retreat check, then you have the Siege 1, which is 7 and 8, and then 9, 10, and 11 is Siege 2, and then after turn 11, the last thing you do is the final stand. You're only going to have two cards in that Siege 1, but when you're doing all these cards, each one is going to give you not only an event, and it's going to have some other things happen to you, it's going to put out German soldiers, things like that, once you get into the sieges, then you're going to be hitting the bag a little bit more, the hit bag more, because now they're bringing an aircraft or bringing an artillery. The artillery pieces will be coming out, and you're going to be getting hit more often and more damage to different parts of your base, uh, injuries to your guys, things like that. So you're going to want to make sure, like I said before, get rid of those artillery guns, because that will minimize how many tiles are pulled out of the hit bag, and you also want to make sure that you're repairing things as quickly as possible because not only you're going to have repairs from parts of the fortress that are damaged you're also going to have to deal with jams on your guns things like that so there's a lot of stuff going on at one time here in each turn at the end of the turn once you've gone through your three cards uh, actually at the end of every phase in the turn i should say you have your morning phase and then your day phase this is when you take your Defenders, you put them into the ready, you pull them out here, you place them, you do your actions, and then at the end, once you're done, then you go to the morale phase, and what's going to happen is each time, based on what you do, you may or may not get modifiers, negative or positive, and that will give you other things to do. Like, say you go down negative, it'll have you draw low morale cards, like here for negative two would be draw three low morale cards and resolve two. These low morale cards are not good. They really are not. They are bad. <laughs> you don't want to get those. Uh, early on, it's pretty light. It's kind of that probe. Mobilization first attack. You add one German patrol. On this one, add one despair card to the high morale deck. Now, you've also got these despair cards. And, for example, it says here to draw two and resolve one. Well, when you draw two... One of them could be the despair card. And it says here, you must choose this card when drawn. At the bottom it says, you may injure one defender to remove this card from the game. That means you kind of put one of your guys in the infirmary to get this card out. Once, they, once you do that, then it's out of the game. It can't be used again. But these low morale cards, you'll see as things go on, it gets increasingly worse. Like here it says, add one despair card to the high morale deck, which we just talked about. For Siege 1, remove a delivery token from the rightmost supply depot. That's these tokens here. So if you've not gotten your supplies back by that, which you probably won't, you're going to lose one of these right away, and that's not good. Siege 2, lose a defender. If you choose this card but cannot resolve it, draw one tile from the hit bag and resolve it instead. So losing a defender puts him in the morgue. If you can't do that, then you're going to have something hit you. Not good things. You also have high morale cards and we'll take a look at a couple of those these are going to give you good things if you get positive modifiers you add those and it'll tell you the same thing like draw three high morale cards resolve two or draw draw four resolve three mobilization first tack add one miss to the hit bag 
mobilization for attack on this one, you gain one supply. On Siege 1, remove two German patrols from the map. And then Siege 2, repair three damage tiles. For Siege 2 on this one, you gain two supplies. And then Siege 2, it says move the defense level up one. So you see these are really beneficial to you, which is why you want to try to do the things that keep your morale up rather than negative, because negative is bad, <laughs> as you would expect. Negative is always a bad thing. So again, it's another aspect of the game that you have to balance as you move along while you're dealing with this onslaught from the German military. And like any time you have a worker placement mechanism, you're never going to have enough workers to do the tasks you want to do. So your defenders are always going to be short compared to what you need them to be. And as the game goes on, I mentioned before, the supplies are going to dwindle. You're going to start off, ah, everything's peachy, I'm great, I got four. These one supply cube is equal to four. Well, by the end of the game, you're going to be down to one. And you're only going to be able to get one worker out, one defender out per supply cube. That's going to be difficult. That's going to be painful. This is one of the mistakes I made. And one of the kind of, uh, I don't want to say problems. I, I want to say one of the things I wish to maybe get looked at for the final version of the game is the airfield over here. This is something that it's kind of just tucked in there. And I was so concentrated on getting guys up and down the whole game and then taking out the, the German patrols, taking out the guns, things like that. I completely disregarded that area, the airfield. The airfield actually gives you bonuses. So you want to attack that airfield because every time you get an attack, a successful attack, you're going to get different benefits like supplies, things like that. And late in the game, you need those really, really bad. So I made the mistake of ignoring that area, and that cost me quite a bit. In the final version, I think maybe you've got, you see how you got these circles around the different areas that you're moving through, the different colored circles, maybe do something similar to that for the airfield. So it kind of pops on the board a little more as a reminder, hey, don't forget about this area because this is a very critical area. Aside from that, though, everything is very, very well laid out. It was just one of the quirky things that I noticed because I didn't use it because I didn't have anything to prompt me to it, which is not the fault of the game. It's my fault for not doing it properly. But I think if there was a call out there, something to draw my attention to it, I would have been like, oh yeah, I got to do that. <laughs> so that's just, you know, a little bit of feedback to Peter on that. I think that uh, could be looked at possibly to be changed. But again, not the game's fault. It's all Moe's fault. So as we talked about, every turn you're going to be having different events taking place. You're going to have injured defenders. Wall defenses are going to come down. Loose supplies, morale, adding hit tokens to the bag. Just a bunch of bad things are just going to continually happen to you again and again. But this is where I think it's, this game is really fun. While I'm saying all that doom and gloom stuff, you just feel every time, even as the supplies are dwindling, you have fewer defenders, you got a lot of guys in the infirmary, you feel like you're still balanced on that razor's edge. You're, it's not, not all is lost. You still feel that I, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And with a couple of good moves, you can pull it off, but it's going to be difficult to do. And that's where the fun and the challenge in the game is because it, you don't feel like you can't feel like a runaway winner in this game. And you're not necessarily always going to feel like a runaway loser. Now, like I did say earlier, there's just going to be a combination of bad choices early on, especially when you first start playing the game uh, and you're learning it. You're going to make some bad choices. And with the right cards that come out and the right bad die rolls, it could end pretty quickly. But you know what? Set it back up and play it again. Lesson learned, you move on. But that's not going to be the case all the time. That's going to be a rare occurrence, and primarily when you're first starting out. But as the game goes on, you, you play more games, you're going to feel that desperation yourself. Like, I'm barely hanging on, and I think that's wonderful because it, it gives across the feeling that the game is trying to, uh, the situation the game is trying to model. It gives you that feeling of you're barely hanging on, you've got that desperation, and you are hanging on. You are, are having some successes, but you're still having this air bombardment, this artillery bombardment, you've got infantry attacking you and you're just trying desperately to hold on as it just grows and grows and grows. But you can still hold out to the very end and have your final stand. And I think that's pretty fantastic. Great job by Peter on that. Oh, and one of the things I did mention, or I forgot to mention on the low morale cards before, 
Remember how I said, oh yeah, you're going to end up with a lot of guys in the infirmary, possibly even the morgue. One of the bad things you don't want to do is you don't want to have guys in the morgue because if you have three people in the morgue, three people dead, that's actually going to hurt you for surrender because over here there's a surrender chart. And if you have three or more defenders in the morgue, you start off at five, honorable surrender, you'll move up one. So you'll be up to five already or six and that's surrender if you ever get to unconditional surrender game's over and thankfully when i got to unconditional surrender the last time it was on the final turn of the game in the final stance so that was pretty cool but something else to bear in mind when it comes to your morale keeping guys out of the uh, how the morale can cascade into getting your guys in the morgue not just through direct combat but through events which would just be reflections of other things like maybe Somebody's walking around in the camp or moving from one location to another, gets picked off by a German sniper. That is what those events would represent. And you have a lot of things to contend with each of these card pulls through each of these phases. Mobilization, first attack, siege one, siege two. And then we're going to talk real quickly about the last stand. After you've gone through turn 11, then you're going to have a one card pull. And let's see, I think I have one of them down here which would be the last stand we can show, I do. This would be your last stand card and it says that it's snowing. Move your defense level two levels down. The Germans are sending everyone they got. This is our last stand. So you're gonna have pulls from your hit bag because you're gonna represent the air and artillery. You're gonna add eight German infantry to the ladder. So that's gonna push these guys up because you can only have five per level. And if you've got five, say if it was like this right now and I added eight more, a whole bunch are going into the charge box and that's really going to be bad. And then you're going to have this arrow icon, which is going to also push up the infantry icons. Then you're going to have guys in the charge box and you resolve anything in the charge box and then you'll basically count up how many healthy defenders you have left versus how many they're injured or dead. And then you'll score things from there and generally you're going to lose. Like I said, I got to the last stand card, was doing pretty good. I went from five all the way to seven unconditional surrender based on this final pull. Now, if I had done things a little bit better, I could have brought down my surrender, but I wasn't paying attention to that because I was too busy with other things. So again, lessons learned for me, the mistakes I made, just like with the airfield, I made the mistake of not paying attention to that and it cost me in the long run. But again, it doesn't bother me. I'm like, hey, I can set this up and do this again, and I want to do this again. So that is a mark to me of a good game, a good design, when you don't feel cheated in this game at all. I have not felt cheated. I felt like I'm in the middle of a siege. It gives that feeling across. You're still making progress. You're still taking out the enemy, but you're still getting pounded, as you'd expect, especially for mostly an untrained group, not professional military, of Norwegians taking on a trained military. You're going to give your best. You're going to sell yourself well, but at the same time, you're going to take your lumps pretty hard because they've got aircraft, they've got artillery, and they've got trained troops. So I think that's pretty neat how that all balances out, and it makes for a really fun experience. And that's pretty much an overview of the game with my thoughts along the way to give you a better sense of at least what my experiences were with the game. I really enjoy this game. I think Peter's on to something really good here. He has a good mix of different mechanics in here. You got your bag building, you got your worker placement, got a little tactical aspect up there. I think all these things together give a really good challenging experience that's gonna make you wanna come back again and again. And like I said before, things are well balanced enough to where you don't feel like you're a runaway winner, you're not a runaway loser. You really are walking that knife edge and you're trying to hang on, which does a, a great job of getting across the siege that you're experiencing in this game. So smart play is rewarded and dumb play is penalized as we saw with me losing, even though I had all that luck, I just did not do a few things that I should have done better and I forgot all about the airfield. That is what really hurt me towards the end and it minimized my ability to get rid of a lot more threats that I had to deal with and in the end cost me the game. But I really do think this is a good game. If you are looking for an historical board game that fits this mold, especially if you're looking for a solitaire game, check it out on Kickstarter this week when it launches and uh, go ahead and pledge. 
Like I said, this is the prototype version. Expect a much better version with the produced game when it comes out because we've already seen what Tompet has done in the past with their games and they always do a great job. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.